Hey, William. No. You could tell me on there if you want. Okay. Um, are you William definitely might join us. That's all I was going to say. I'd oh, okay. To Great. If you can post a link on um, International Beer Review Guild, just in case. Oh, okay. So I didn't realize want. you didn't. Yeah, no. I'll post it. I didn't because I figured nobody would really want it. They didn't seem interested in it. But um, we're doing an examination. Hello, folks. Sorry. We're doing an examination today of Bacardi Gold, a very common rum. Probably one of the most common rum brands you've that is in the world. Um, you may not like it, but you've certainly heard of it. Uh, you get it cheaper in Georgia. I'm being joined by John and Neely in Georgia. I'm here in Louisiana. I tried it for the first time last week. Oh, it was about what I expected. And uh, <clears throat> although it was the first gold rum I ever tried in my life. But just reading the description and kind of kind of like knowing what it was for, it did taste pretty much like I thought it was going to taste. Just like when, if you watch my review of Myers' rum last year when I first tried rum, I right. said this tastes exactly like I expected it to taste. Just having a history of cane, cane sugar, cane syrup, molasses in Louisiana. So you can give us your history of this 40% Puerto Rican produced rum company established in 1862. All right. Well, I have uh, limited experience with it. I've had it before, uh, but it's been years since I last had it. Uh, I bought a 750 mil bottle. This is actually a plastic bottle. Um, and I bought it for $10.99. Um, Let's see. It does have on the back, too, uh, the recipe for the original Cuba Libre. Yes. And then, of course, they had their website for other delicious recipes. They have all kinds of great recipes for this. Um, oh, yeah. I enjoy it neat, but this is a great product to use as a mixer because there's a lot of famous cocktails that use gold rum like this. So, uh, But anyway, it's been, like I said, it's been... It's been probably two or three years since I last had it, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back into it. And I have not cracked open the bottle yet, so this will be my first time having it in over two years. And it's going to be the second time having it in my entire life. Um, yeah, I guess for now on, I'll post the links in um, International Craft. I mean, International Beer Review Guild. I just said, nah, they're probably not interested in it, but I shouldn't presume that because somebody might surprise me and say, hey, I'm interested in it. <laughs> so to me, it has a fantastic, I have the glass bottle, you have the travel bottle. To me, it has a fantastic bottle design and label. One of the sharp looking liquor brands and whether it's good inside, it's different, but different story, but it sure looks nice in, um, yeah, absolutely. They have changed it over the years. It always says head the bat. The um, got the medals on there. A lot of medals. Um, I didn't realize they had won so many. Barcelona, Matanza, yeah. Bordeaux, Paris, Buffalo, Chicago, Philadelphia, and then Paris again. Gold medals. Yeah. And I don't think all the medals it, it, it has won are back to the 1800s. There, there's more modern competition where it's done well. Um, I'd have to look that up. But um, still chilly outside here. Never did get into. Still got that bad damp. Let's see. Damp. Bacardi. Bacar. Maybe if we get a chance, I'll show you what I found last week at Walmart. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, Robert, good. <laughs> Robert was like, Go ahead. I ain't reviewing that stuff. But some people have a negative attitude about uh, this. And uh, I don't take exception to that because I always say people should say whatever they think about a product, honestly. Um, well, and Robert, I don't think necessarily has a negative view towards this. It's just something that, I mean, he's a whiskey guy and he has, he doesn't keep this in his lineup regularly. Yeah. And he's just kind of like, dip his foot into the beer thing as a matter of fact and uh, he's not a huge fan of that he does it kind of like to kind of join us and stuff you know and uh, it, 
no one is required to be super dedicated to any type of beverage after all. I, yeah, I wouldn't consider myself dedicated. I would just consider myself, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, I just enjoy a lot of this stuff. I, I, I'm not like a hardcore um, type of person when it comes to this. I, I enjoy a little bit of everything. So Yeah, I am the same way as we've noticed. And at first I was trying to be stringent about it just because I didn't want to, to get out of hand like, I started doing brandy years ago, and I thought, I'll just stick to that. We kind of had to prod you a little bit to get into the rum. You you were, you were you had so much other stuff that you were, you know, the, the brandy, the whiskey, and all that. Like, rum was like, well, I would like to try rum, but I don't, I don't want to get too, you know, get off onto that tangent because then it might lead into this whole other thing that I don't have time for. And then be sidetracking side -track, me. And, um, right. When about four years ago, when I started doing, um, I forgot to mute it when I was doing your hangout earlier. I, I, I was doing with a rum, a brandy, brandy, brandy. So, uh, but the main comments I got from brandy was people saying, "When are you going to do whiskey?" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I don't they care about the brandy, you know." Um, but they kept harping on it, and I started a Facebook group, and nobody was interested in brandy. So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, other than alcohol, at you're talking about a separate group. Yeah, and sherry, brandy, and sherry. They were like, nah, nobody cares. So I said, well, there's no point in like trying to fight against this, the the uh, main force of the river. So if that's what people want, I said, I'll go ahead and try a few whiskeys. So I started getting into it more and more. And then, um, so what I did was I took the brandy web, the brandy Facebook group and I turned it into alcohol eggs. Okay. And then people started getting interested in wanting to join and wanting to join. And so then you may, and I see William has joined and we're about to talk to William. Then you were saying, when are you going to try rum? And I was like, no, no. Like you were saying, I was like, I don't want to get caught up in that. And then, but then viewers started asking me, I said, well, it's not going to be a tragedy if I try it after all. <laughs> so right. I'm glad I did. Now, I noticed on the website for Bacardi, they're showing the old label, Carta Oro, Superior Gold Rum. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that's what it's called now because mine says Bacardi Gold. Yes, that's what mine says as well, Bacardi Gold. And then they talk about Carta Oro brings together. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. We want to welcome William. Hey, William. How you doing? We are um, right. I had a stout, but I overslept. So uh, uh, I, I, I would uh, join this as an, a quote-unquote observer. But uh, I don't mind oversleeping because that means I'm feeling better. So uh, Good. Yeah. Uh, well, people have been asking for you, William. Glad We're glad to have you, William, anytime. Some people were saying, William Kepley, get your blank, blank, blank in oh, here. Yeah. yeah, It's hard to do that when you're under the knife. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I had, I had other priorities, but, uh, but I'm doing much better now. And I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful to, you know, be able to come on these things and, uh, I've never tried the Bacardi Gold. There's many things I haven't tried, and uh, I'm still trying to drink down the whiskey that I purchased on a Kentucky trip some time ago. I got a little overzealous on that one, uh, but uh, I still enjoy the whiskey as an outlier occasionally. So uh, I'd be interested to in hear your comments on this one. You know, one I might pick up. I could probably get a mini of this one, you know, if I, or a small 375 bottle for this one. I think yeah. very, I think very easily you could, and um, I'll say this: whiskeys that are coming up, or um, it's sad though because the stuff that y'all probably can't get because I keep getting the same feedback. I have the Sir Malcolm Scotch. People are like, I can't get it. I have the the um, Tom Sims Bourbon, which people are saying can't get that. Um, I got the. Uh, Cap uh, the heir to the throne Canadian whiskey, and everybody's saying I can't get that. 
I have a bad habit of running across obscure whiskey brands that no one else can get, but I, I find them for such a cheap price, I can't bear to pass them up. Have you ever done Rebel Yell? No, but I, I'm very familiar with it and I can get it very easily. I do have a small bottle of it. I found it in my stash. It was covered underneath, buried underneath all the other stuff. So uh, if you ever do Rebel Yell, give me a yell. Yell out. <laughs> <laughs> give me a Louisiana yell, and uh, I'll if definitely go for that one. If I can find a smaller bottle, I might do it. I see it. Mm -hmm. got Rebel Yell cherry flavor also. Uh, it's it's a company. Rebel Yell is produced by Luxco. Their most famous brand at Luxco is Everclear, <laughs> the notorious oh, uh -oh. Everclear. <laughs> Uh, and then they make the Calvert, which Lord Calvert, which, uh, and then the Calvert Canadian, which we tried the Lord Calvert and, um, uh, that's a yeah. U S slash Canadian brands, but we won't get into that. Well, Bacardi is a Cuban slash Puerto Rican brand because when they had the communist revolution in 1959, they fled to Puerto Rico and continued on and survived because they lost all their assets and then they rebuilt and now they're a huge liquor empire and they don't just own rum they own a lot of other uh, brands and another common bacardi brand is castillo which i have a bottle of castillo gold and castillo white which i was able to get for a very nice price before we start tasting it let's see what the notes say they're saying bacardi carta oro like the, the gold type Brings together rich, smooth flavor, sooth, rich, soothing flavor like vanilla, buttery caramel, toasted almond, and sweet banana notes, balanced by the warm zest of orange peel and a light oaky finish. Now, I'm not going to say that I picked all that up last week, but um, I'll try to be open-minded. They, These people that are tasting it and writing the marketing copy, <laughs> they might have more experience with it than me. And Do you ever get disappointed when you uh, hear a description of an alcoholic product and it doesn't quite measure up to your palate? You think sometimes it'd be better to try everything before you read anything about it? You yeah. know, I often wonder, the flowery language and some of that stuff, you know, sometimes then I'll drink it. I said, it's good, but, you know, I'm not getting that, uh, that degree of yeah. sophistication in the taste. Yeah. One good thing on my end is that I usually can't remember what I read. You know what I mean? Like I read it and then I'll go on and do the review and I'll say, well, yeah. what did they say? Oh, I can't remember all that stuff. You know, like it's not like <laughs> I'm not sitting there memorizing it. So and I don't write it in the notes. So. But yeah. You're right. It's better to taste it. Write a review and then see what you if what you said matches them. And that's the way I like to do it. Do the tasting, make the video, and then write the written review on like distillery.com and uh, Proof 66. And then see, and same thing with beer too, and see if it's matching up with what other people say. And then usually I'll find that that is the case. I'll find mm -hmm. some odd element in a liquor like, what is this strange cinnamon flavor? And then I'll read other reviews. What's the strange cinnamon flavor they'll say? And I think, huh. <laughs> Yeah, they have people whose job is to put their product in the best possible light, you know, and, they, and the words, the descriptions they use. I mean, I'm sure they, they go over that very carefully. And sometimes, you know, it's uh, uh, to me, it's more of a generic taste flavor. Yeah, and I can't definitely point out all of these specific things they're talking about. But uh, occasionally you'll get the uh, situation where, you know, you'll discover something, go read about it. Say, oh, I, I guess I was sort of write about that. It was like the Coors Banquet, the banana note, which is mentioned on their website. And there's they still have a product and, taste the process. and you know, I didn't read that until after I tasted it. I said, I'm picking up some banana in this. So that was pretty nice to, to uh, be reinforced when I read that on their website. There's no doubt about that in that particular case. Now, Tyler Mansell says the legends speak. <laughs> okay. And he says, see, what did I say? <laughs> okay. Now, well, John Ailey, you get first dibs on the tasting because 
It is very gold now. The appearance is certainly gold. You got you very got gold. Some. Yeah, very gold. Nice alcohol legs. Um, and that's about the goldest thing. Um, wow. Okay. Um, so I'm actually getting some wood. It's the first thing I'm picking up on, like some oak. Yeah. Very mild white oak, right? Yeah, yeah, not, not nothing charred, nothing extreme. Um, but a lot of sugar. Oh, it's like a, a lot of sweetness. Yeah, it's hard to cut. It's hard to place on the nose. I haven't tried it yet, uh, but it just it definitely smells like it's going to be sweet. You know, rum. You get uh, like maple syrup, molasses. Uh, I mean, depending on on the the style. Like this is a lighter rum, so I'm thinking maybe more like maple than than molasses. But yeah, it's it's a lot of sugar and alcohol burn on the nose. You get that forty. You now you got to remember, people, this is forty percent alcohol. Forty percent of the volume in this is pure alcohol. So you're going to get that burn. And you do get a burn, yeah. I will say it's it's very pleasant. It's it's oaky, but not charred. It's sweet, like caramel, maple syrup, maybe. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say molasses, but that's just from the aroma. I haven't tasted it yet, but it smells very good. So, cheers. Yeah. Cheers to sugar cane. <sighs> And I didn't let you give your aroma before. You can go ahead and give your aroma if you want before I describe it. But no, it's the same stuff. And uh, I, I'm picking up charred wood now, though, in the flavor. There's no doubt about it. It's, it is a there. A little bit. It's there, and it's light. It's not like the Myers's, which is like drinking a barrel of that. Yeah, the Myers's was thick too. This is very thin, and it, it's not a thicker mouthfeel. Like the Myers is like the molasses, the um, blackstrap molasses that we that you were talking about with the Myers is. You're not getting that with this. Um, I call it thin. I would call it medium body. Um, I think it has some body to it, a little syrupiness. Oh, uh, I wouldn't say syrupy. I don't know. I mean, little. after having the uh, Bacardi Black, the Captain Morgan, the Sailor Jerry, the right. um, Myers is this is thin in respect to those rums, in my personal opinion. It is good though. I mean, there's plenty of flavor, but it just doesn't drink syrupy and heavy like some of the other rums that I've had. And you do get the oak, you do get the the cane sugary note. Um, I would say maybe more of like a maple syrup than a molasses. There's a, like a like a maple syrup thing almost. Um, but it's very smooth and easy drinking. There is an alcohol burn on the finish, but that's that's about as harsh as it gets. Is on the finish, you can tell that you're drinking a, you know, a spirit because of the burn. But it, as far as the sip from the or the aroma, the sip all the way through, it's pretty smooth and enjoyable. I think it's thin relative to the Myers's and even the Bacardi Black. But right. it, to me, yes. relative to those, but on its own merits, let's say we're not even talking about the, the it has a little, little, and I mean, it's not a lot, but a little bit of body to it. Um, it's a, I think that the charred oak builds as you drink it. <clears throat> it's sweet all the way around. So like, candy people candy 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 you like candy you like sugar you like rock candy you like sucking on like hard sugar you like that flavor this is good if you like that because that is what you're getting and it's a lighter sugar of course and um i don't know how long it's aged they say at least a year and william knows what that means yeah like a year and zero days <laughs> 365 exactly a year right on the button <laughs> there's a website and it's fascinating and it's called the rums of puerto rico and it's a trade association that's been around for a long time like maybe 100 years and uh 
or at least 80 something. And they have all the companies that are members of the rums of Puerto Rico. And they have to follow certain guidelines. Like their rum has to be aged in oak barrels. It can't be aged in some metal tank. And uh, I think that's one of the qualifications. Of course, they all have to be from Puerto Rico. And they have to all be aged a minimum of one year in, um, in the barrels. So um, you say, well, that doesn't sound like much. It isn't, except that you find out other rums aren't aged hardly at all, if at all. Like, look at the Paps Blue Ribbon whiskey that's coming out. They're being cheeky about it on their Facebook page. They say, Paps Blue Ribbon whiskey is real whiskey and it's aged for five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally clear. I mean, they're, you know, they're being sarcastic. Aged for five seconds. <laughs> Are you talking about the new Paps Blue Ribbon, like, hip, high 6.5% uh, alcohol beer? No, 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 no. They've gotten into the liquor. Uh, oh, okay. I I saw I saw something on Alcohol Legs about the new PBR, like ice beer, like heavy. And I I was blown yeah, away by that. Yeah, malt so, liquor, PBR extra. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess they sacrificed paying any attention to their website because those guys. I really think Pastor Blue Ribbon is like six guys working in some room, like I'm in, <laughs> and they were like, "We can't pay attention to the website right now because we got to develop." Paps PBR Extra, PBR Easy, and now Paps Blue Ribbon Whiskey. And they probably said, yeah, let's say it's age five seconds. That would be cute. The hipsters will love that. So, and, and like one day we'll we'll do something with our website. We are finished with spring <laughs> cleaning, although people don't know what got cleaned. Since. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, that's something to be on the lookout. Uh, I did post that on Alcohol Eggs, John and Ely. It says it's... It's literally a bottle of whiskey, and it says Paps Blue Ribbon whiskey. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. I saw that. that. You and saw it. Really, I was taken aback, really, when I saw <laughs> PBR whiskey. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh. Almost certainly, I bet you I would put money that it's coming right out of the good old state of Indiana. <laughs> You know it ain't coming from some Paps Blue Ribbon distillery that they suddenly it's not coming from that Milwaukee brew house they've got, I know. <laughs> so, uh, not, not that boutique brewery. Um, This, to me, this rum, to me, is pleasant. I said, what is floating in it? Oh, that's actually a reflection. <laughs> I got a reflection floating in my beer Um, from the window. I thought it was some kind of gunk. Um, and my, I mean my rum. Um, it's mild. It's, I said that in my solo review. It's oh so very mild, which to me is probably the reason it's one of the most popular rums in the world. Because what do most of the world's audience like? Harsh, heavy, and difficult? No, they like mild, pleasant, and easy, right? <laughs> That's my perception of it. Yep. Uh, every palate starts out wanting easy mild and sessionable and then if you're lucky enough to develop your palate and get into some of the really really good stuff then great but most people they like they like their macros they like their cheap liquor and there's nothing wrong with that i think they get into a comfort zone yep they uh, a lot of people uh, kind of they reach a point where they don't want to go any further and that's it for them Bud Light, uh, Budweiser, Bacardi Gold, uh, Old Crow, uh, cheap, you know, and if that's how you are, then fine. But uh, there is a lot of other stuff out there. And if you can kind of get used to certain things, you might be surprised at how much incredible, amazing things are out there. And I think as, as you and me and William, we're kind of like hobbyists. So sometimes we get caught up in that and, and we say, well, we're hobbyists and we want to try everything. So then we start to think that why everybody else is not like that. So and but most of the world isn't coming from that viewpoint. So. Right. You got like people, they they, they they'll try. They'll say, well, I'm going to drink some beer and they'll drink Miller High Life and they say, I like it. And then they'll just only drink that for 45 years and they're just satisfied. They're satisfied with it like it works. So and then you're saying, hey, try this stout. Oh, uh hey, try this uh, India Pale Ale. And they're like, they're, they're saying, well, 
I don't want to. I got right. It. If it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, type of mentality. You know, um, yeah. and it took me a while to st to stop like hammering that. And um, like the guy next door, he would humor me. You know, like I let him try Modelo Negra, and he was like, "Oh yeah, that's really good." And I left. I said, "Well, you could have you know keep the bottle, you know." But I'm thinking I probably left. He probably dumped it down the sink. You know, he 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 played along, but it's like. Tell he's not interested. Now they'll drink Bud Light long, right? Way more volume than me, and I'm not judging them on that. That's what they like to do. They seem pretty healthy people, so it's just not my job to go proselytize trying new things. I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, people are gonna like what they like, and uh, some people are more stubborn than others, and they're not willing to. Try new things, and if that's their prerogative, then fine. I mean, you can't force, you know, you can't make as much as you might like to. You're not going to make somebody else like something, be, you know, just based on what you think. You know, you might be drinking a world class bourbon barrel aged stout. You want your friend to try it. Like, this is so good, whatever. But if it doesn't taste like Bud Light to them, if that's what they're used to drinking, they're going to say this is terrible, whatever. And that's just how some people are. And you know, to each his own. Everybody likes different things, and some people don't aren't as adventurous with food, drink, you know, alcohol, food. I mean, th there's something to be said about everything when it comes to this. It's not just alcohol, but right. like so my brother. My brother likes fried chicken and French fries, and he doesn't really he, he he doesn't eat fish. He doesn't eat this, that, and the other. I've tried for years to try to expand his palate a little bit, and he's not having it, and that's just how he is. So I have given up on trying to get him to explore new foods and try new things because he's just not that kind of person, and that's fine. That's what he likes. So, so who am I to judge? The point of that, folks, is that we we're we're not going to try to be flavor missionaries anymore. <laughs> we're going right. to make videos. We'll make the video. If you watch the video, fine. If you ignore it, that's fine. All right. So last assessment of the Bacardi. Gold, um, are you favorable towards it, and would you recommend it? Yes, I'm very favorable towards it. It's a it's a lighter, um, really smooth, easy drinking uh, or easy sipping rum. Um, there are a lot of more complex and, and and better rums, in my opinion, on the market. However, for nine ninety nine, ten ninety nine, for a seven fifty mil bottle. I think it's I think it's really great. Uh, I would give it a B. Just I don't really give specific numerical ratings for for liquor yet because I don't feel like I'm qualified. But it's a solid B. It's a, a pretty reasonable price point, and most people are buying this to mix in cocktails anyway. And for that purpose, it's excellent. So I would say overall, it's a it's a great product, a solid B, and uh, it does exactly what the you know what, what what was intended uh and and that's about it they didn't miss the mark in other words they, it's they, yeah they they hit it they hit the nail on the head and they're doing exactly what they want to with this product uh it's easy drinking and it's great as a sipper and it's also great probably even more so as a mixer if that's your sort of thing i'd probably go with an a minus say about a 92 out of 100. I might have gone higher when I did my solo review. People will call me on the carpet for that oftentimes say, well, in 2013, you reviewed this beer and you gave it a 90, you gave it an A, and now you're saying A minus. Why is there a discrepancy? And I'm saying, well, I don't really have a catalog of all my beer scores in my mind. That's right. why I type them on Rape Beer and Beer Advocate so they're there. I can always go look them up. So, and they might say, well, did your palate change? Is it hit? I say, it's nothing to do with any of that. It's just that I forgot. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And for me, it's a little of both. You may, you know, I don't look at my previous reviews if I were to do a revisit or whatever. It's just what I think in the moment. But, at, you know, your palates do change. Uh, Especially people like us who like to try everything. Like that's why I was talking earlier on Stout Sunday about Guinness Draft. Uh, I gave it an A, A plus, even maybe the first time I reviewed it. I think it's a, a an excellent stout. But getting into the bourbon barrel age stuff, the super high ABV stuff, my palate has 
developed and I really like some of this other stuff. So if I were to go back to a Guinness draft, I might find it a little bit watery, a little bit not as good as I remembered it from years ago when I first tried it. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad product. It just means that I've, I've gotten into more complex, higher alcohol, barrel age, this, that, and the other, whatever it may be. But that's not a strike against the, the other product. It's just completely different. And people's palates do change over sort of time. Like, sort of like hot sauce. I used to think. Exactly. Yes. I, I used to think Tabasco. I can't eat that. How could I eat that on egg? You know? Exactly. You call now, it the wall. You get you break through the wall. You have a heat wall with with yeah. hot sauce. You have the alcohol wall with liquor. And once you can get through that burn, that whatever, and you start tasting all the complex little nuances and flavors and stuff, the alcohol is less in play, and the quality and the flavor of the uh, of the product itself uh, is more in the in the in the front seat, and that's what you're rating the now, product on. Now, one more thing. Now. I, th I think certainly over the 23 years I started drinking beer, my appreciation of different items has tweaked a little bit. I would say it's, but it has not drastic, but it has changed. I remember when I first tried uh, a beta turbo dog, I thought it was so strong. And then, but I, but even when I was tasting it, I thought, oh, I'm probably going to get used to it. I'm just not used to this. Yeah. So, but I have issues with people saying stuff like, well, I drank Budweiser for 35 years, guys, and I only drank Budweiser and I loved it. But now I realize how trash it is since I tried new things. And I say, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, hold on a minute. I can understand if you realize there was more flavor out there and you might have gone into more interesting things. But it took you 35 years of drinking a product dedicated to realize it was garbage. I might have yeah. realized that in 30 minutes but not 35 years. So that to me is sort of like hyperbole, you know, like you don't need to do all that to just say how good this Imperial IPA is. You don't have right. to, have to talk about that to bring up that or to well, evaluate that. And, and I've taken issue with that with p certain people over the years. And then that that's oh, people oh, that, that don't, People that say stuff like that, they, they don't understand styles and they're trashing it. Like I've been drinking Budweiser for 35 years and then I tried a bourbon barrel aged stout and I thought it was absolutely just sublime and this, that, and the other. So now I think Budweiser is garbage. Well, that's the wrong way to look at it. You obviously drank it for a long time. You liked it. And then you tried something new and you liked it even better. Does that make the first thing that you tried and drank for all these years garbage? No, it just means that I mean, I mean, it's obviously a different style completely. So to compare the two would be silly, but it's just it's it's being able to differentiate between two very different products and appreciate each one individually yeah, for what I mean, they are. Yeah, but I mean, I heard the guy call it urine. Yeah, yeah, that's no, that's like, wait, you know, you, that's baloney. But you drank for thirty five years. Wait, yeah. Drink, drink, uh, do a blind taste challenge with Budweiser and urine, and then you tell me which one is better. And I guarantee you, it's not going to be the actual urine. Okay, I'm going to read. It's, gonna it's, read a silly, it's a silly argument. I'm going to read it. I know. I'm going to read. I'm going to read a few comments. It is uh, Michael Komarov. Hey, Michael. He says he's watching from Brooklyn, New York. And he says, Pabst Blue Ribbon, right out the vat into the bottle. Yeah, that's right. No aging. No aging. Max Walt, which you can have a whiskey with no age on it, by the way. Uh, Max Walt says, hello, hello, Ron, and hello, all. Hey, Max Walt. Oh, Michael Comer says, I have a big bottle of Don Q Gold upstairs. Oh, yeah, I saw some Don Q yesterday. That's another legendary brand, which maybe, how old am I now, 50? I'm going to check back with you when I'm about 60. And we might be able to examine because I got such a backlog. But Don Q is famous, you know, or maybe in some people's mind infamous. But it's an old, it's an old, it's real old, <laughs> real old. Ronnie S says, cheers, Big John and Ron. Hey, Ronnie S, it's good hearing from you again. You're one of our loyal supporters. We appreciate it. We certainly do. Um, I don't remember what I gave it on my solo review, but I could always look that up. It's right there. 
anybody can check me because it's right there on uh, distiller.com and uh, proof 66, my actual score. Uh, well, to me, it's like a dynamite product. I mean, um, if you look at it in the right context, and that's the whole point of my rant earlier of looking at things in the right context. And do you, William, oh, why isn't Mikey Komarov on here? Oh, no, he, he's not really interested in spirits. Uh, John Anilli says, cheers, everyone, and thanks for stopping by. Now, do you, William, and you, uh, uh, John, want to see what I got last week? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I already know, but, yeah, the viewers out there would definitely love to see what you got. On the uh, subject of beer reviews, I'll sometimes I view those as just a snapshot in time at that oh. moment. It's a I mean, hey, you, could, you could be having a bad day when you drink a beer. There's a lot of factors that go into, you know, how you evaluate a beer. So, you know, subject down the road, you know, it can change. Right. But I don't view that just as a snapshot. That's right. You know, and. Uh, That's right. That's like, you know, William, on, on my channel, I've only revisited one beer so far because uh, there's still a ton of beer that I need to do before I start doing these revisits and stuff. Ron has been doing it for years and years so he's he's kind of ha he kind of has to cycle through some some of the stuff he's already done again um but i did Tecate and i rated it i think in the in b minus or b range or whatever um and then i did an examination with with jay on his channel and i rated it much higher so i was like you know what to be fair to this beer i'm gonna redo it and and, and whatever but like you said it's kind of like you might feel a certain way about a beer or a wine or spirit one day and then a few days later, a month later, a, a few months later, a year later, you drink it again and you have a completely different mindset towards it. And that's I think that has a lot to do with how your day is going, but also as your palate evolves and as you get you try more and more things and you kind of, you know, ex expand your palate is really the best way that I like to describe it because. There's a lot of things that I tried uh, at first and didn't like. And one of those was Budweiser. And we did the second chance beer examination yeah. on the channel, which I believe was William Kepley's idea. And Budweiser was my second chance beer because I hate I didn't like it at first because it was very different than the other macro beers that I've tried. Uh, but then I grew, I grew to love it. So anyway, that, that's just kind of... I'll shut up now. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, 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 Victor Wang says, is the legend William Kepley on here? He's sure so is. knowledgeable. I like listening to him. This is no chimera. This is no phantom punch. This is really William Kepley. And some people know what I mean when I say, that was no phantom punch. That was no phantom punch. <laughs> William I would knows. like to try the Bacardi Gold. The only rum I've ever drank was the Kraken, which I drank on a hangout. Oh, yeah. right. I remember that. The Kraken, you liked it. So no, it, it, I'm sure it's quite different than this one. So I would like to, you know, drink yeah, it. it. It is different. Here is this box. I'd like to try the Kraken. Now, this box, if you can believe it, says made in China. <laughs> Don't see that too much unless you go to a store, any store. All right. It's got a felt back. So the back is felt. Now the it's heavy. It's really heavy. It's a, it's I think it's cedar. It's wood. This is not um, some kind of particle board. This is actually that's why when I went to pick it up at Walmart, I said, "Good grief, it's heavy." And I was scared it was going to come tumbling off the top shelf. So here it is, a glass front, and I put some uh, I put some bourbon in here just because it had room for three bottles. Oh, I was gonna say the Cooper's Craft. That wasn't part of the deal, was it? I have had Cooper's Craft. I, no, had, I just I've had Cooper's Craft. Is it any good? I was a little disappointed, actually. Sorry to hear that. Uh, it, it was the guy at the liquor store recommended it, and I had pretty high expectations for it. But uh, you know, after drinking it, I you know I thought that. It just for the price point, I didn't think it equaled up really. Yeah, my friend David bought it. And he said he was disappointed as well. And uh, 
I checked their website and it's no longer even listed as sold in Louisiana. So the only thing left on the shelves is what's left over. Matherns had this bottle for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Wow. Seven. I figured on a closeout price like that, I couldn't go wrong, right? Yeah. So it, it's uh, this will be the last call for Cooper's Craft. Apparently, it was like the first new bourbon that Brown Foreman had put out in a long time, and it seems like it went over like a lead zeppelin. I uh, use the uh, Evan Williams Black is sort of a measuring stick for. It's right in the middle level, and I didn't find the Cooper's Craft that you know exceptional, so uh, I just. So that's your baseline. Right, right, for a reference point. And the Cooper's Craft to me just didn't, it wasn't excellent. I'll be open minded though. Here's the Bacardi uh, Reserva Ocho. It's a 750. Unusual looking bottle. I had seen it on their website, but I thought when I saw the prices of it in the store, I said, I'll never be trying it. <laughs> but, um, I stumbled across this big box here at Walmart last week for $35 plus tax on a closeout left over from the Christmas season. I said, well, and I, and I, and I went and rechecked the prices and I said, this is half price at least. So only, my only disappointment is this, it's that rubberized cork, you know, it's not a real cork. It's like that neoprene DuPont thing that they use a lot, that rubber. Yeah, like Cana like the Canadian Club. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was my only this one. So I tried it. I did a video and I went on for seventeen minutes overboard. I was like going too crazy about it. So, folks, don't watch that video because it's just going to be me for seventeen minutes going, "Oh, this 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 rum is so great," and then I'm talking about this this flavor note, that aroma, this flavor, that this that this that. <laughs> So remember, don't watch it. All right. <laughs> then, then we've got the Master Blenders Reserve. Wow. This is the Grand Reserva Diaz. It was put in the barrel in 2008, and it was bottled in 2018. And this was the first bottling ever, I think. So. Kind of neat, huh? Age 10 years. I can't wait to open it. It's normally 40 bucks a bottle, but I got it for 17.55. That's if you don't count the box. So I was very pleased with this purchase. All I've got to say is if I could find either one of those in a set or single, I will definitely have to check it out because I'm a big, you know, I love brandy. I love rum and whiskey. Those are my three, you know, the, the darker spirits. And, um, I've never had a rum that has, or at least never listed on the label anyway. That's, I mean, that's, that's like a new thing. Aging yeah. a rum eight to 10 years is really unheard of. That's a whiskey, uh, you know, like a good bourbon, happy Van Winkle or. Um, oh, well, yeah. You know, they're feeding into that whole. They're, they're kind of, it's, yeah, but, exactly. But, but rum has a lot of, a lot of good character and would do well age aging like that i think in oak barrels so i'd be very very interested in trying something like that for sure now, i've just never seen it and you said this might be the first year that they're releasing anything like that because i think we, we've never seen anything like that before i think 2018 was the first year for it i looked up video reviews for the ocho the eight year and it was only a handful and that the oldest ones were from like 2018. Right. So, well, I, and I even it's... even the really good rum that Robert the Whiskey Scout had earlier on the Stout Sunday that we were talking, it may have been off air. I don't remember if it was during the live stream or not. But remember, I asked him, I said, well, is there an age statement on that? I was curious because it sounded like a like an incredible rum and whatever. There was no age statement on it. No. Well, I would think that if a rum was aged, at least four years put and upwards that it, they would market it as such because that's a big selling point. Yeah. How many 12 year old whiskeys don't bother telling you it's 12 years old? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. They don't tell you when it's four years old, they might just say, uh, it's a wonderful whiskey, you know what I mean? Now, uh, yeah. but if it's three years old, they got to tell you, cause that's the law, right? 
right? Uh, it's less than 48 months. So like William says, a lot of times it's what they don't say that tells you what you need to know. Yes. Like I might say, hey, John and Illy, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And you might say, how dare you ask me that question? <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and have you ask me that question. This is America. And then you're going to go on a 20-minute monologue. Right. Well, I didn't really answer the question, though, did I? I right. will not dignify that question right. with an answer. <laughs> well, you pretty much answered the question. Yeah, <laughs> if, you went that long, if you went on that long diatribe, I might start getting an idea that I have my answer. Um, here is the dregs of the Paul Masson Madeira. And I noticed that at the dregs, the very bottom of the bottle, it's very thick and full of tannins and gunk. So what happens is all the grape refuse settles down at the bottom of the bottle. So I gave it a good hearty swish and pour. And this is so much like a, almost like a prune juice, but it's 18% alcohol prune juice, but. Wow. Oh man. And now starting this week, I'm gonna break I'm going to drink down the Palmasan Marsala, which is going to take a long while. And then, then I'm going to, then I'm going to break open the Fairbanks, Californ California, uh, port port. Yeah. You and I, and maybe some others are going to, uh, look at that. Right. If yeah. You're, well, if you're interested, of course. Uh, you, yes, I'm. Uh, I'm definitely in. I've been. I've been waiting a long time to try that. I've been putting it off uh, out of respect for for your channel because I want to drink it for the first time live on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and as usual, I got it for a crazy price. Like I got the huge 1.5 liter bottle for 9.99. I think it's more money here. I think it's 6.99. Or maybe even seven ninety nine for the seven fifty mil bottle here. So it's not that that was a closeout price. It's nowhere near that cheap. Oh, okay. Albertsons was getting rid of it. They got rid why, of the why you are yada, man. They got rid of the Krabari. Albertsons had Krabari Marsala on closeout three ninety nine a bottle. I, I I didn't need more of that. Then they had the California Port one point five liter. For nine ninety nine, the normal price was like about like fifteen ninety nine. I said, "Well, heck, <laughs> I'm buying it." You know, eighteen percent alcohol. It's not like it's going to go bad anytime soon. What you getting a good? You getting some good messages there? I Man, I'm just looking. Are you talking to me? I'm just looking at the chat. Uh, Let me Victor look Wang that. says that brandy is probably his worst hangover. <laughs> oh, and he ain't talking about the ladies. Talking about the drink. Yes, yes, of course. Well, we think. Uh, now, Victor Wang says, Wicked. Well, I have a feeling, Victor, you didn't drink like a little glass like this of brandy. <laughs> I have a feeling that you might have. Uh, 47 straight. Oh, boy. You see, some people yeah. are going to never live it down. They're going to never live it down, but you brought it upon yourself. 48 straight says, Things change. At first, Krampus scared the heck out of me. And then yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie <laughs> Ronnie S says, craft beer pours, clink, clink, and a shamrock. And then Victor Wang says, Ron, have you ever examined, have you ever examined mucow? No, but I'm very sure. What is that? Is that a, what the heck is mucow? Mucow is a famous cognac. Well, I don't know about how oh. famous it is. It's, it's a cognac and it's got a tiger on it. It's a Sazerac brand. Um, I can easily get it, but it's a little bit, it's kind of a gourmet kind of, it's kind of expensive, but um, there's so many variants of it. It must have been some kind of Southeast Asian thing, probably back when they had French Indochina, probably has something to do with Cambodia and Vietnam or something, but uh, it's pretty well known. I think one day down the road, I'd like to get it. And then Ronnie S says, Krampus? <laughs> well, Watch out, Ronnie. Watch out. <laughs> Victor Wang says, whole bottle, Ron. Yeah, I'll drink a whole bottle, Victor. I'll drink a whole bottle in about a month. That's how party animal I am. I'll drink a whole bottle of bourbon 
over a 31 day period, man. I don't get crazy, guys. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> our idea of a party animal is watching the NCAA selection show while I drank on half a can of Coors Light that's left over. That's kind of how crazy I get. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I might eat some potato chips too while I'm watching it. All right. Dick Wang says, laugh out loud, run. Okay, well, we've examined the Bacardi Gold. We were very favorable toward it. I thought it was excellent. You thought it was very good. And my, and my, I saw a ghost. I thought I saw Michael Comer. What? My my wife left with my daughter, so I came back. <laughs> it's that guy. It's that <laughs> my pillow guy. No. Oh, man. <laughs> I love the, I like the hoodie, Michael. To college, the University of I, I like the, I like the color. That's, uh, that's my high school colors, the, uh, the royal blue and gold. I love it. That's Joe Flacco school. That's right. right. They won the 2002 national championship, and um, he's NCAA. now, with, he's now with the Denver Broncos. Right, right. He'll probably do a lot, but yeah, the Broncos are going to be contenders this year. <laughs> Now, before we get off the air, we, we are, and Michael, we're not getting off the air just because you joined. We were planning, I was actually only going to make it 30 minutes, but we start talking and we blabber mouth, you see. Um, we've got, the, we've got the, the famous William Kepley joining us, and uh, we're so happy that you could join William. Just yeah. that's that's my two cents. Thank you. I'm saying I'm a blabber mouth. I'm not saying Johnny Neely's a blabber mouth. I am a blabber mouth. As I, the, the, uh, yeah, the bourbon barrel aged stouts that I was drinking earlier got to me. So I'm blabbing, but I'll shut up now. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, do you, one more thing I'll say before we get off of this. Talking about Delaware, which I've driven from the very top to the very bottom, which actually didn't take long. Uh, but um, do you know that Delaware and Pennsylvania used to have the same governor until 1776? I know. What I mean, what I mean by that is, the same man was the governor of two different places at the same time. They shared a governor. Now that's that's an interesting way to do it, right? Yep. So yeah. that's a way to save money. Just and have one guy do, be the governor of two different places. They were the first state to ratify the Constitution as well, but they had such a lower amount of population. It was easier to get to the people to have them ratified and that's right because it wasn't the as much argu right there wasn't as much arguing because it was such a tiny amount of people right. and the last state to ratify it was rhode island which was also a small state geographically but it did have more population yeah and their problem they they almost didn't ratify it. they, they all, the other 12 states ratified it and they were telling rhode island well you, you, you don't have to join the United States. You could just be your own little country if you want. Doesn't matter to us. And so Rhode Island thought about it and they said, oh, okay, <laughs> we'll join, you know. Uh, uh, George what, Thorogood from Delaware. What? George Thorogood. And the uh, Delaware right. Destroyers. Ooh. He was a semi pro baseball player in Delaware, was, was an all star, and he was forced by the other band members to quit baseball to devote it full time to the band. And He's been rocking ever since. And that's the bad to the bone, George Theragut, right? Right, absolutely. And from that's what the I, same guy, too, that does the, the When I Drink Alone song, that's, right? I was about to say, you may not be aware, but he always drinks alone. <laughs> when, he, <laughs> when he drinks alone, he prefers to be by himself, is what he... Yeah. Right. Well, that's the only. Uh, I was going to ask you guys a rum question. I, in in the commentary when I was watching before I came on, I said I had some. Is it Ron Q that I have? Yeah. How does that? Have you had that before, Ron Q Gold? How, I wonder how that compares with the Bacardi Gold. It's probably comparable. Similar price. Similar. Uh, it's another Puerto Rican rum. I don't know yeah. how it, how how it. Oh, you know, I, 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 that sounded more expensive, but yeah, if it's it's comparable to the. Bacardi Gold in price, I would say that's probably very similar in 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 quality. It looks similar in the color. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, uh, uh, it's kind of like uh, this is a dangerous thing to say. It's kind of like Coke and Pepsi in the sense that they're 
comparable. Now you got your Coke, Coca-Cola fanatics and Pepsi fanatics, and they would never agree to that. They right. would say, I'm going to track you down and right. I'm going to hurt you because you said Pepsi's like Coke. And everybody knows. There's a lot of Puerto Rican rums, though. There's Ron Rico. I mean, I could probably name five. Oh, oh there's an enormous, there's an enormous selection. You could do a video channel only reviewing Puerto Rican rums, and you would never run out of top. You would never run out. No way. No way. It's like you just couldn't run out. So you can get that specific with your video channel if you want to now. Uh, Jeff Lyons decided he was going to do that with New England beer reviews, that he's going to just review beers for New England. It's good, but in a way that was bad in some ways because a lot of the ones he reviewed are so obscure that the rest of the U.S. just can't get it. Like when Eric Eric Fronfelter does, he'll say, I found this you know, compilation Zydeck from Periscope you know, pinwheel brewery and um, you can only buy, you know, they only produce 12 cans a year and, all, and people can't get it, you know, so it's hard to relate to it is what I'm saying. Also, he doesn't, yeah. one thing I've been interesting about Jeff Lyons, he doesn't do Southern Connecticut, which is interesting to me, the area that's next to New York. There are beers and he doesn't do them. I don't know why. Maybe he doesn't want to travel to get them. Yeah, it could be that the distribution is so limited that he might have to drive all the way down there. And you know, the traffic down there can be kind of. I'm just saying, he does very well in the area where he's centralized, and then the rest of it is not as good. And I, the and the point there is that see his whole channel. That's the point I'm making. Like you could dedicate your channel to something regional like that, and you'd never run out of. Top. No question. No question. Even in, his, even in his regional area, he probably can do all beers there, and that would keep him busy all the time. Right. Now, the appeal may not be there because well, just because people have to watch watch videos what he's doing. That's the key to how well he does. Yeah, because people in California might say, well, I never heard of that. You know, so it, it, I think a lot of the viewers are like me. If I've never heard of the beer, I never had it, I'm not going to watch the video. I know John and Ely doesn't agree with that for himself but uh I, well i mean it's not that i don't agree i just i just like to watch i mean i don't i don't look at the review websites and stuff like beer advocate rape beer stuff like that but i like to watch other videos yeah well tanya, your friend tanya who does a lot of reviews also seems to be willing to buy from these outsourcing places of beer like she'll I, i'm trying to think of one there's one tava what's what's the ones where you get six a month tavers um you know what i'm talking about oh it's like a club it's like a club and that's how she gets some of the things in california that she can't get there because they these clubs you know throw things in and she'll do stuff which had she get that and that's how it turns out she got it yeah because i never heard of it through a, through a club she finds thought, a lot of really obscure california beers too Right, but she does stuff from Connecticut. And I said, how do you get that? And then she'll say, I got this because I'm in this group and whatever, or she traded with somebody or whatever. She tells like, me where she gets it from. Is that like the old Columbia Record Club? I think, <laughs> she's, in for like I think, <laughs> I think she's in something like that where yeah. you get a certain amount of beers every yeah. month. It could just be random odd objects. Right, which is probably a good way to do it. I I get good enough distribution just in my in my co-op that I never have to go outside, and I'd be very happy. And that's it. I, yeah, I'm well, curious, and and part of it is the buyer there, the distributor she gets it from, is willing to go because we have such a large amount of people who do it. We she can't even fit all the beers she could get because we only have whatever space on the shelves that she can do it. And she there's rotation, but the rotation depends on how fast the beer sells. If the stuff moves off the shelf, she's got it. She gets more of it, and that's how it right. works. And you're in New York, and it's a huge port city area, so you get a lot more variety. New Orleans gets a lot more turnover, although that's changed because of the burgeoning Louisiana craft beer scene, which has chased a lot of stuff off the shelf. Tanya in East Bay, she's right there by San Francisco and Oakland. We know San Francisco and Oakland's get. And a tremendous amount of stuff, especially Asian uh, beers. So it's just and, like. And where William is, 
because of the burgeoning North Carolina thing with um, Asheville in the West and oh, yeah. the state, he William in his area within 30 miles could probably find an amazing amount of different things just based on on how that market has has blown up. It's amazing. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. When I, when I visit the Total Wine stores, I get the uh, deer in the headlights. Yeah, because you don't know what to buy. There's a lot. Right, there's so much stuff. You know, I could drink a different beer every day, and the beers would outlive me by far. So you know, it's it becomes a, you know, what you want today. What do you want to try today? But but it's just uh, it is overwhelming just to see the amount of beers being produced today, the number of breweries and such. Uh, and John, you too can go and probably buy anything you want. Also, oh uh, yeah. yeah. Atlanta, Atlanta. Atlanta. Georgia is a great state for craft beer because we have so many craft brewers. The only thing with living here is the gonna say. Big law with the 14% limit on beer. So Bourbon County style and uh, the big ass money style from Evil Twin that we were talking about earlier, stuff like that, I can't get. But but we do, I, you know, I'm very grateful. I, I live in a great state for beer. I really do. All right, now I'm going to end this because it was Bacardi, and I don't want people watching saying, "Yeah, you're going off some kind of beer talk." Okay, now, uh, so, uh, well, I don't see any more comments. So, thanks for watching, people. We did the Bacardi Go. We were pleased with it. We recommend it. But remember, it's very mild. It's mellow. You might even want to say bland if you want to look use that terminology. So, if you're looking for intense, robust, like super powerful craft rum uh come on you know it's not gonna be that for 11.99 a bottle or something like that you know what it's gonna be it's, so it's sort of like the jack daniels of rum you know what it is before you get off a shout out to victor wang who asked for me to come on did you notice in the comments he asked where i was i don't know victor, who wang. victor wang uh yes yeah. michael Kormoff, thank you for getting him to join as well as uh, Victor Wang says that William Kepley is a living legend. So there you go. And I, that, I, agree, I agree he's a living legend. He is a living legend. William Kepley is the man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. See, see, folks, if you're watching, you could join the Hangouts, and then one day you'll be a li living legend. I enjoyed this getting back on the Hangouts. And as, as Yogi Berra said, you can observe a lot by watching. You can observe a lot by watching. Sure. And, 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 yeah, you're a living legend, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I'm right. in that. Uh, that's what uh, Miss Locum used to say on uh, Are You Being Served? She would make some argument about something and she'd say, I'm unanimous in that. <laughs> <laughs> she'd always say that. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. <laughs>